Our next speaker is the uh, co-founder of the Institute for Local Self-Reliance. He serves as senior staff to the, of the Waste to Wealth Initiative. And he also serves on uh, ILSR's board of directors. He specializes in helping cities and counties recover increasing amounts of materials from the waste stream and adding value to the local economy through uh, new processing and manufacturing facilities. Please welcome Neil Seldman. Well, uh, uh, good morning still. Uh, it's certainly nice to be here. It's a pleasure to be uh, part of this presentation. Um, I will be talking on uh, my uh, experience in 40 years of working with citizens, fighting bad incinerators and solving problems. Uh, in the waste stream, uh, but I also uh, come from a background of manufacturing, and um, as an academic, I've studied uh, the process of change in many of our historical revolutions, the French and Russian Revolution, where societies were uh, disintegrating, and of course, our own American Revolution, uh, where society was emerging, uh, business and uh, civil rights uh, were emerging. Um, and um, from this experience and from my own studies um, and working with the Institute, our philosophy is that scale and ownership in the economy are critical. They're critical for sustaining civil society and all the benefits that we're struggling to, uh, to make our uh, democracy become. Um, we have, the country has a uh, history of this. Of course, the legendary Tea Party was a number of local businesses reacting against a global international corporation, forcing them to purchase things they didn't want and at prices that were exorbitant, uh, very similar to our economy today. Um, we feel uh, that um, the small business community, and I'll use examples from the recycling and anti-incineration world, are absolutely critical um, in forming the coalitions that can turn things around. We're about to face a major election. Um, it is critical. We're very close to having a Supreme Court that will support our values on uh, uh, voter suppression, uh, reversing Citizens United, ending gerrymandering. gerrymandering. If the election doesn't go w away, these problems that plague our country uh, will still be there. We will not run away. We will tighten our belts and work harder. Um, and the importance of small businesses uh, in our economy is one, the small businesses and, and family farms, uh, they breed independent people, people who have independent resources, can think for themselves, can do their own research, res uh, research and can connect with other people through their business and civic uh, relationships. Um, the, uh, uh, the fight uh, for small businesses can be the same as the fight for citizen rights. Um, they were an important component. As I said before, they were a necessary, if not sufficient, uh, aspect of our initial uh, revolution. Um, but even today, we can rely on them for uh, fighting taxes, uh, fighting for uh, fair tax, uh, for, for uh, fighting for fair regulations, um, and to uh, stop the regulations that are throttling creativity, innovation, uh, as. Uh, 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 David Freeman mentioned in the energy field, and others have been mentioning in, in other fields. Um, they are very po potent enemies of uh, allies in fighting incinerators. Uh, you may know that uh, New York State was the first uh, state to tax the internet, from, uh, which uh, without taxes gives uh, these giant corporations a six to nine percent advantage over local businesses. Um, New York State was that first state to do that. Many others have followed, not all. And small businesses were a critical component of that coalition that forced that legislation several years ago. Um, small business people are rooted in the community. Their kids go to the same schools, the same churches, the same swimming clubs, uh, the same public uh, facilities as their neighbors um, and their other business people. Uh, they Im immediately uh, get involved in civic activities when they perceive their own interests and the interests of their neighbors and other, um, uh, other elements of civil society. Uh, <clears throat> my two favorite examples, again, I'll draw from the waste field, are Representative Bill Pascrell, 
uh, who's now represents Patterson in the U.S. Congress. A medical doctor started out fighting incinerators, became mayor, and now is uh, in the House of Representatives. Um, my favorite story, however, um, as uh, Oliver has his favorite story about the San Francisco airport, uh, mine is about a woman named Penny Wheat, who was just a regular uh, person uh, living in Alachua County, the county where Gainesville is, and they were proposing a giant incinerator, uh, and uh, she testified against it, and literally, this goes to the early 80s, um, was told to go back to her kitchen. Uh, she did do so, and she organized her campaign for uh, the county uh, commission, which she won by more votes than any other politician in the history of the, of the, of the county. And uh, she became quite a powerful uh, element in decision making, uh, not only on solid waste, uh, but of course the incinerator was defeated, citizens were organized, they put together their own plans, and now Alachua County is one of our leading zero waste cities at, uh, at about 50% recycling, tending toward, uh, trending toward 80 and 90%. Um, if you want to have an, a healthy economic system, you have to have small businesses and small farmers. Both are in great decline, both are under tremendous threats from every aspect of society and every aspect of business. Um, the, uh, the networks that are being built uh, are being built by people who want a better economy for all. Um, local businesses uh, allow communities to have a collective efficacy, uh, efficacy to solve problems, to join together, uh, reverse even climate change. Uh, there's one very interesting project uh, the, the Marin County Carbon Project showing that applications of compost from food waste actually can reverse climate change. Uh, and there are a num number of other revolutionary changes that small businesses in the recycling and waste field are emerging. Um, the key here is the growth of small business means the market share of oligopolies and monopolies are diminished, which frees us all to, uh, to focus, uh, use our, our impact on local government uh, to dictate wage conditions, working conditions, uh, whether uh, unions uh, should be allowed in this process or not. Um, the, uh, let, me, let me get now to uh, uh, the, the field that I've uh, uh, most been involved in. People say I am knee deep in garbage, I'm quite proud of it. Um, and it's, it's uh, 40 years uh, of work, a little bit more than 40 years, um, has resulted since the late 60s in a remarkable multi-gender, multi-race, multi-class, uh, and uh, multi-ethnic uh, and multi-gender and age um, a coalition that has consistently defeated proposed incinerators. These are top-down decisions, massive incinerators, three, four, five thousand tons per day. You may have heard in Baltimore, citizens just defeated a four thousand ton per day incinerator. And the, uh, the capacity to stop something bad um, is, is fairly prevalent in society. It happens a lot. But to so stop something that's bad and then not only propose a solution, but organize to gain control at the local level to solve that problem is very unique. Uh, and uh, it's been a very worthwhile uh, career working with small businesses, community groups, environmental groups to accomplish these. Uh, just to give you a very quick uh, set of numbers to put, you, uh, to put this in context, uh, the sector of waste is anywhere from 70 to 100 billion dollars a year uh, <clears throat> uh, in the country. There are 60,000 businesses supported by 40,000 government programs. Over 100, 1 million jobs have been created in the last 40 years uh, with recycling. Uh, to give you a, a sense of comparison, um, for every 10,000 tons of garbage you put in the ground or in an incinerator which you destroy the material, you create one job. For every 10,000 tons of material, material you recycle, you create four to ten jobs just in processing and then hundreds of jobs as uh, these materials move out to industry and agriculture. The most labor intensive and skill intensive activity is the repair of uh, electronic scrap. For every 10,000 tons uh, that are repaired, you create just under 300 jobs. And these are transformative jobs. They teach skills, they teach uh, ability to cooperate, to understand technology, and of course, to use that technology to improve uh, your education uh, and contacts with other people. 
um, to the recycling uh, system in the United States today delivers 200 million tons of raw material to industry and agriculture. Um, in the 1960s, uh, it was, uh, it was not, not even counted, less than 5% of materials were recycled. Um, following the war, World War II, where, of course, a great many materials uh, were recycled. Um, not only uh, is this recycling a very physical, uh, uh, positive thing in our economy in terms of lowering costs of raw materials, etc., cetera, um, it has also shown that organized citizens, ad hoc organizations of, of citizens getting together have stopped Wall Street from bonding these, these uh, five and six hundred million dollar uh, facilities. Uh, it has stopped the virgin material companies from expanding because everything, well, when you, you recycle material, you, anything you make out of virgin material, you could make out of recycled material. So where there's a direct correlation uh, with extraction of raw materials and recycling. Um, it has helped beat incumbent officials and incumbent bureaucrats who refuse to acknowledge that incineration and mega landfills are the way to protect our health. In fact, neither of them do. Um, so um, in order to uh, not destroy materials but to recall their value, add value, and create independent cities that are again manufacturing things, um, we have worked um, uh, with, with many, many groups, churches, youth groups, uh, cultural groups, ethnic groups, environmental justice groups, to show that local manufacturing from recycled materials is an important pathway uh, to the future. And finally, um, I would say that the recycling movement in the United States since the, the let's call it the post-World War II recycling movement, uh, really getting ground in the late 60s, but uh, empowering people in the 70s, 80s, 90s, and, and to this day, the most important thing we produced are citizens in the Aristotelian sense, citizens that are active, are not passive, they vote, uh, they take responsibility for holding office. These are the citizens that we need. Uh, I believe, uh, well, we all know that uh, we don't need a majority of organized people to get our agendas across, uh, but we do need active citizens who've been activated by concerns in their own community. And everybody touches garbage every day. Every, uh, anything that becomes garbage passes through a human hand, and that human hand can decide whether to make it garbage and destroy that material, or to put it in a different place to use for community and even regional and national economic security. Thank you for your time.